Welcome to part two of our maze. Um, part one, what we did was we created our maze, got it the way we wanted it, kind of like a Pac-Man game with little islands inside of our maze that we can go around and collect items, which we'll be putting in later. Okay. Uh, part two, what we're going to be doing is adding in our main character and then programming him so that he can move throughout the maze. Also, we're going to be setting up the camera, which we'll be doing first thing, okay? So what I want you to do is you're going to right-click your camera, and we're going to delete the camera. And then what I want you to do is right-click on your maze and do Shift-S and do Cursor to Selected. And we're going to add in a new camera, okay? And that camera will be right there under your maze. So you're going to use the blue arrow. You're going to left click on the blue arrow and drag up. And the reason we're adding in a new camera is because I find it easier for you guys to do um, than trying to move the camera that's already in there around. Okay. So what you want to do is hit zero on your number pad and you'll be seeing your camera like this. Um, you can see on my screen that the camera is not taking up the whole maze, so what I need to do is raise it and make it higher. So I'm going to hit press G and Z, and I'm going to move the camera back so that the whole maze will be in there. And then I'm going to use my middle mouse button, I'm going to scroll up so you guys can get a better view of that. And it's almost where we want it, we just need to rotate it, so I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to rotate it basically so it'll look like it did originally um, if you notice down here the Y axis is pointing to the right and the X axis is pointing down that's the way it was originally set so I'm going to leave it like that okay and when we look up we'll see our camera is way up here so that's fine basically we want a top view for our game um, in other years what I've done is I've had the camera follow the object and it just doesn't come out as nice so we're gonna do it this way this year top view with the camera okay alright so once we have that let's go ahead and add in our main character okay so we're gonna just to make sure you wanna select your maze do shift s and make sure cursor to selected is picked and we're gonna put our cursor on our maze and also you can always hit period on your number pad to zoom in on whatever you have selected. Okay, and that make sure you push period on the number pad, not on the keyboard. Okay, so let's go to add mesh. For our main character, let's choose the UV sphere. Okay, if you want to do the cone, that's fine, or maybe the cylinder. Um, I've tested out the UV sphere so I know this works well. So if you want to do one of those other ones you can, but that's at your own risk. Alright, so let's hit S and just scale him down a little bit and I'm going to use the blue arrow to move him up. Alright, so our UV sphere is going to be our main character and let's go ahead and set up the controls for him. To do that, you're going to go up here to where it says Default, and you're going to choose Game Logic, and that'll give us an, a different screen. And this screen is used basically to add in the controls. Over here where it says Add Game Property, we're going to add one, and we're going to name the property Fred, F-R-E-D. So our main character will have a game property that says Fred, and that's F-R-E-D and it's all lowercase. When you spell something out in the properties you need to make sure that it's spelled correctly and you have the correct uh, capitalization. So we'll just do all lowercase to keep it simple. Okay, in the game engine you have sensors, controllers, and actuators. And let me talk about something before we talk about the sensors, controllers, and actuators. I'm, right now I'm using the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. And if you press down the middle mouse button and hold it down and move your mouse, you can move these from side to side. 
So go ahead and take a moment, practice that. Okay, that'll be important in order to see what you need to see on your sensors, controllers, and actuators. So sensors sense when something's happening. So a sensor could be like a keyboard, a key being pressed, a mouse movement, or a collision with another object. So what we're going to do first is add a sensor, and we're going to select keyboard. And where it says key here, we have this little gray uh, box. You're going to left click, and it says press a key. So you're going to press the up arrow key we are going to program the up arrow. All right, under controllers, you're gonna add an AND controller. And once you've done that, you can connect the sensor to the controller right here. So you left click and drag. Also, I wanna point out, um, if you wanna delete this, what you can do, I guess the easiest way here, um, would just be to like delete the controller okay let's go ahead and connect those and we're going to add an actuator and it is going to be a motion actuator um, and right now it says LOC and ROT so what we need to do is we need to select um, our UV sphere and we need to go back to the default mode and go to the physics property and blender game up here and we're going to change him to a rigid body make sure actor is selected and collision bounds is selected and then go back to game logic and when we do that you'll notice that we have a lot more selections Okay, down here at the bottom you have three columns you have your X, Y, and Z so when we push the up arrow on our keyboard, we're telling it to do a motion. And we want it to be a linear velocity motion. And you really need to be aware of where your arrows are pointing. So my camera, the way my game is facing, I know that the green arrow is the Y axis. So if I push up, I want my UV sphere to go this direction, which is up to where the green arrow is pointing. So where it says linear velocity, on the Y, I'm going to type in 10. Okay, and then I need to connect my controller to my actuator. Okay, so once you have that done, go ahead and press P, and you can try it out. Um, and then once you have that, you're good, okay? So we are going to add in the controls now for down and then left and right. So we're gonna add another sensor. It's gonna be a keyboard sensor. The key will be down. Add another controller. It'll be an AND controller. And let's add another actuator. And it's going to be a motion actuator as well. This time, uh, since we're pressing the down arrow, we want it to go in the opposite direction on the y-axis. So we're going to type in negative 10, and that will make it go down. All right? Um, right here, these little triangles, if you click on them, it'll minimize your selection. It's very important because eventually you're going to run out of room. Okay, so let's do our left and right now. So add another keyboard sensor, click on key, do the right arrow. Let's add an AND controller. Make sure you always connect them. Add another motion actuator. All right, this time, I'll go ahead and connect these. Uh, this time we want it to go right. So the way mine is facing, the red arrow is to the right. So that is the x-axis. So I'm going to type in 10 and hit enter. All right. Um, and also just a note, uh, basically the higher the number, the faster the object will move. So you can play around if you 
want yours to move faster, you would have to put in a higher number. Okay, and let's add the last sensor. So go add sensor keyboard, and let's make it left arrow. Let's add an AND controller, and let's add another actuator and select motion. All right, and for our left arrow key, we're going to type in. That's right, negative 10. Okay. So once you have all those set up, you should be able to control your person through the maze. So go ahead and press P, try that out. Um, some common pitfalls are basically putting it on the wrong motion type. So what these mean, this is like location, this is rotation of an object, angular velocity, instead of going in a straight line, it'll go at an angle and then you also have force and, tor and torque. Okay, So that will be it for uh, lesson two. Once you have your guy set up and your camera is in the right place, you will be good to go. Don't forget to save. Okay, so go to File, Save.